Prunes, Romans, Bunch Cake Men, Lend Me Your Ears. For today, I will present to you, on this episode of Talking with Famous People, an explanation of why there are exactly 16 types. After this little song, I'm going to play a little bit of this. any vocals for this yet. I don't know if I'm going to have any vocals for it or not. I don't know what it is, it's just... Alright, that's enough of that. Here we go, on to the topic. Why there are exactly 16 types. Knowing and deliberating. The introverted functions. Two different ways of affording status. This is sort of some pre-information we need to sort of establish a little bit on, about terms and such. It's your NI and your SI. Interfacing, I mean, NI and SI and TI and FI are your knowing and deliberating functions, respectively. And knowing and deliberating are two different ways of affording data a status. One requires you to calculate, one doesn't. Interfacing and acting. I got a new bong, by the way. The extroverted functions, two different ways of engagement with an environment or system. That's TE and FE and NE and SE. Acting and deliberating. They always are together in the one, two, or three, four. So S E T I, S E F I, F I S E, F I any, but they're always together. Now this is not explaining why they're always together yet. I'm just saying this is the the model I'm going to explain here in a second. And it's it's the it's the way the cognitive function model is understood by almost everybody who thinks about cognitive functions. <laughs> Not that that's in and of itself a reason to prefer it, but it does establish clearly the burden on those who deviate from it to establish why the deviation is preferable. <coughs> Interfacing and knowing are always together in the one, too. That's T E F. I mean, T E S I, T E N I, F I, F E N I, F E, S I, etc. They are always together in the one, two, three, four. They assume more fluidity within the system, work better on systems that are more open, and that is the physical or social systems. Acting and deliberating work on representational or personal systems. Personal systems being FI. And so I put this table here to clarify all this information. This is kind of a, that first bit is not a good way to present information really, but this is better. SI, it's a knowing function, it's experiential knowing, and it pairs always with TE or FE, NI. It's a knowing function, it's intuitive knowing, and it pairs with TE or FE. And we can think of SI and NI being rooted in, respectively, uh, object permanence and shape constancy. Object permanence says, I know now from experience that even though I wasn't watching this thing the whole time, it's still there when I... When I go look for it again later, it hasn't moved itself. 
Shape Constancy says, I recognize that no matter what perspective I look at the thing from, and though it looks different to me, it's still the same thing. It has its identity in and of itself that's outside of my experience with it. Now, you might think those are the same thing, really. You know, like, uh, object permanence is saying, well, that thing has an identity outside of myself, and it still exists whether I'm looking at it or not. But that's not really the conclusion. The conclusion from SI is, when I go back to that thing, it'll still be there. And, in other words, I can experientially count upon these objects uh, being it, retaining their their relationship with me in my absence. In other words, I can assume the system is static. Okay, I can assume the system is static, and uh, and operate accordingly. Now, the thing is, what we'll see is that. Well, we'll get to it. Hold on. I don't mean to jump ahead of myself. It's T is interface with non-conditional logics. FE is interface with social logics. So non-conditional logics are the logics of the world that are not conditional logic. That is to say, how a lawnmower works, or anything like that. Social logics are FE stuff, like how hierarchies work and how people are influenced by praise and um, criticism and how people's feelings and motivations provide a meaning of understanding the way the world works. FI is deliberation on a personal logic. Is this important to me? It's an interested calculus. And it always pairs with SE or NE. And TI is deliberation function. It's conditional logic. It's the logic of argumentation, the sort of logic I'm trying to use right now in making this thing. I'm not trying to, I am. And we'll see how this document in this video is an example of what I'm trying to get at here uh, in a short order. SE action, physical action, pairs with FI or TI. Any action, communicative action, pairs with FI or TI. Simple explanation. The J's in MBTI lettering. Okay, now note in this regard, in some sense, MBTI was on to something. They had the right instinct here because what they were doing is they were saying, let's put all of the interface or knowers together as J's, and let's put all of the action deliberators together as P's. A perfectly sensible thing to do, except you're not using the right letter there. Those interfacers, knowers, are not all judgers. Half of them are perceivers, as you define perceiving in judging terms, namely perceiving term perceiving being any uh, SI, NI, and SE, and judging being the interface and deliberation functions. Um, I mean, judging being the uh, yeah interface and deliberation functions. So uh, the thing is. You've got them um, split like that, right? It, MBTI does. But MBTI is correct that these should be grouped together like this. But instead of calling them J's, they should call them, um, you know, IK's, interface knowers, or AD's, action deliberators, or DA's, you know? So that that's the thing. This is revelatory. The fact that MBTI grouped them like this, the Sisyonics disagrees and says, no, 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 no. INTP is really a J, and INTJ is really a P. Well, that's because there's a failure to understand, I guess, on both parts, that the distinction between perceiving and judging is ridiculous. There's no reason to make that distinction at all. Except for the fact that the, you'll see here that these ones are all logics of some sort. So it does make sense to call these all the same kind of function in that regard. Except these are responsive logics and these are non-responsive logics. That is to say, the grammar of the system is open in these ones. It's, you have to be responsive to a changing grammar. What's important in this circumstance and that sort of these ones do not have changing grammars. You just have to be responsive to 
to data that comes in and out. So uh, half the types of some combination of FETE, NI, SI in the first two slots. These are known as interface or knowers. They operate, by me anyway, they operate under the assumption that statuses are already known and that deliberation, withdrawal from real-time exchange to calculate, represents a hiccup in the process. The XXXPs, half of the types are some combination of TI, FI, NE, SE in their first two slots. These are the actor deliberators. They operate under the assumption that statuses need to be determined and that interface, they need to be directly responsive to changing conditions of the environment without the opportunity to calculate, represents a hiccup in the process. There, in other words, you've got people who want to have the grammar of the system that they're dealing with stay the same, in which case they can reliably deliberate and act because their the grammar doesn't change. So I can take a, you can make an argument at me and I can take it away and think about it later and come up with a correct response to it. I might not be able to come up with it in real time. Usually nowadays I can because that's the way my knowing function begins to improve over time is as an SI user I have a repository of past experiences to draw from and that repository grows as I age. Um, presumably there's some equivalent refinement of NI as one ages as well, but I don't have an experience of it myself, so I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, and an NI user would probably uh, be better able to understand SI than an SI user able to understand NI. Hidden agenda. Oh. This further explains why the third slot is the hidden agenda. When they, with the interface knowers, for example, the need to deliberate at first presents adversarially. When the need arises, they first they find their expectations about how life ought to present itself and how life frequently does present itself diverge. This links back to the prime directive: avoid divergence between expectation and reality. So. And the same is true with with the action deliberators. When the need to interface, in other words, when the need to not just be right, but to be socially graceful presents, it at first seems like a, a hiccup in the process. Like, you're not focusing on the right thing here. I, I'm using my one and two functions, and according to those functions criteria, I am succeeding here. And the grammar is not supposed to change. We're supposed to be using static grammar of language and not something else and then you realize well but there are other vectors in play and sometimes life requires one to not just be right but to be cool and to be liked and to worry about the motivations of others and yeah 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 so why is this then the hidden agenda well because as a person ages they grow to expect the environment to demand some deliberation so they hold themselves accountable in one way or another when deliberation fails them. Thus does self-worth come into play. To succeed is first to expect reality to challenge one by requiring a less comfortable attentional channel some of the time to enable one's more comfortable attentional channels to work well as an approach to being. Second, when one employs this less comfortable channel appropriately and does attain that smoothness of being, then one will feel as though one has risen to the challenge of reality which validates one's identity. So, why are there exactly 16 types then? Well, because I can either take an approach where I assume the grammar of the system is static, that everybody's basically operating about cognitive functions in the same way that I am, namely that they're saying there's a progressive set of arguments being made here, and some of them are winning and some of them are losing, and some people are failing to engage argumentationally entirely, and that's fine. But the thing is, it assumes that I don't need to worry about the social impacts very much, except except as they apply to me. Like, I need to make sure this video is not snotty or snarky. Hopefully I'm in a good... I feel like I'm in a good mood, so I, this should be a pleasant enough video. It's really, it really has lots of my mood. Sometimes I get snarky because I'm just having it on a sleep or something. Um... But I'm either somebody who makes this thing and then makes the video and that's my default way of being or I'm somebody who 
like gets another person to come on and I talk to them about it and I interview them and whatever and I don't really present a whole lot of my ideas because the purpose of life is the interfacing not the acting and um, you'll see that in INFJs or in INTJs who are interfacing a lot as well just not so much socially they're interfacing with you know coding or with music or some other system that requires TE, you know. And for those of us who are action deliberator types, it just it just just doesn't work that way. Um, we'd rather we'd rather the system be static and respond predictably to our to our actions against our deliberation metric. So it's like, let's say I'm an ENFP. I might express some ideas that I like to affirm, that make me feel good to affirm. And um, somebody might add on to that idea. I might withdraw at some point then, even if it's, and withdrawing doesn't have to take a long time, right? It, it's, it's a complicated equation here, but, um, and I might conclude that I like the way that feels to me. And so I embrace that addition to my ideas or that I don't like the way that feels to me. So I dispute that addition. Um, because the status is assumed open to, statuses are assumed to require calculation to to decide what they are. And if I'm an interfacer, it requires that I know. Interfacing, I've said before, is, is some combination of put, get, and receive information. But I've concluded that it's put and get information. The receiving part is the, the knowing function that goes with it necessarily all the time. And ultimately, what you've got here is a system that requires that a person either take a calculatory action approach or a knowing interface approach. It's a different thing. Digging a hole. Let's say, let's say I've got some ground that's going to present no, it's very uniform. It's just regular dirt and I'm supposed to dig down into it five feet a hole. And as I dig this hole, I'm given a shovel that's perfectly suited for my height and body and everything, and is perfectly suited for the task. And all I have to do is just dig the hole. Well, there's not really a lot of TE there. There's some SE know-how, I guess, to sort of like TE, like, you know, understanding good ways to shovel is maybe TE. I'm not sure. But the point is... What I don't have to do is make any further decisions about what I'm doing until I'm done digging the hole. Um, reality always throws us some loops. Maybe I hit a, uh, a root as I'm digging the hole and I have to decide what I'm gonna do about that. Am I gonna chop out the root? Am I gonna, is it too big to chop out? Uh, you know, In that instance, it requires some TE and some and some SE probably to resolve the issue. But the point being, if I have a, a task that doesn't require any updates between the beginning of it and the completion of it, then we're talking about something that is conducive to a deliberation action approach, right? Whereas if I'm constantly having to, if I'm tasked, instead of digging a hole, I'm tasked uh, to determine a way to get from here to there, through this mess of obstacles, then I I have to, and you can't see every one of the obstacles to begin with. You have to walk through the process. Okay, well, the next obstacle I came to is this, right? Um, and it has its own logic, and I have to figure out. Like the last one, it was just a board I had to push over. It was very simple. And this one, it seems to be a locked door, but there's got to be some way through it, so i got to figure out how to get get through this thing one way or the other. And anything will do because my goal is the thing that's the same. Get through this thing. And my uh, 
it's the process that I'm going to use or the action I'm going to take that is going to be responsive to changes in the environment. So those are two stratagem, strategia, strategia, I think is plural, strategies, <laughs> I don't know, to dealing with the world. You can't act in interface because interfacing requires knowing as its partner in order to do what it does. And you can't interface, you can't just put and get information without knowing what any of the information means. It, it doesn't make any sense and it's not a kind of agency that works as an agent in any system we understand. Agents operate within systems along vectors there are objects in those systems, and there are fields in those systems, and there are grammars, and it's how reality works, you know, I mean, we have to understand things as being constrained by exclusivity. So, I can't both calculate this on, I, I it is conceivable for me to calculate something both on a personal and an impersonal calculus, and to draw two two distinct statuses as a result. Those two distinct statuses may be in coordination with each other or may be in disagreement with each other. So, for example, um, I might I might conclude that this this video is pretty successful and put it up there. That's that, This is not really a good example because that's not a TI issue at all. I might, I might conclude that um, that the the winner of the argument in this instance is my student and the, the loser is the other student and I might also conclude that's what I want to have happen in a round um, and I conclude that my student's the winner because of what happened on the flow I actually flowed the round and judged it properly and I concluded that my student actually is the winner that's a disinterested calculus and there's been plenty of times when I think my student actually is the loser and I feel sad and maybe even if they win that round I go well you got lucky because you really should have lost that round um, so that's a disinterested calculus. Sometimes my interested and disinterested calculus are in agreement, and sometimes they're not. But the thing is, there are some circumstances in which one's interest is very strong. And in those instances, it's easier for me to make an interested calculus. In instances where my interest is not compellingly strong and obvious, it's difficult for me to even make an interested calculus because I have a disinterested calculus as my tool function which means as a default I approach every problem in life by doing a disinterested calculus so I'm very unpracticed at using an interested calculus and presumably if there are if there are certain neurons that are devoted towards understanding one's own feelings and that kind of moist introspection then I would have fewer of those and certainly brain plasticity is a thing and certainly as people develop their brains develop in accordance with their needs and habits and attentional manners and stuff like that as far as I understand the thing. So it's important to remember that we are constrained here not just by existing definitions of cognitive functions and new definitions of them and blah, 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 but we're constrained by the mechanics of agents and systems and system dynamics that there are Fields, objects, agents, vectors. There are, as I've, you know, and I've explained the, the way this whole notion plays out with cognitive functions, on multiple videos, and I'll do it again at some point and explain it further. But, um, I mean, the primary takeaway from this video is, if you, if you have, if you have agents that can operate in defiance of the grammar of system dynamics then your model's not going to work because there's got to be dynamic balance within a system and it just it's it doesn't make any sense to, to think that uh, an agent can interact with his environment in a way that does not do both parts that you that have to be done you know 
you you have to you're a person who has the capacity to make choices. You're a person who has the capacity to pause and reflect and and not just immediately go with your gut impulse, right? The capacity to to make decisions exists. At least to the best of our ability to understand what that would look like if it were existent, it exists. We have conditionality, so we can conditionally evaluate different things. The notion then that you could have introverted introverted or extroverted introverted misunderstands the nature of the functions and misunderstands the nature of being. A being is both has both an internal part and an external part and they have to work in coordination with each other or else you just it, it just I mean it's like it's like trying the idea that you could have extrovert extroverted is very much like the idea that you could pick yourself up off the ground by lifting at your pant legs hard enough you're you're not getting that there's another element here that needs to be factored in, right? It's it's strangely blind to representational logics. Anyway, this end bit has been kind of a little rambly, so I'll wrap it up. Thanks for watching. I'll share a link to this, this document if you want to look at it. I hope it's clear. I think it's convincing. The one thing that has to be affected in at all times, again, is the, this prime directive thing. That's what makes it all come together. Human beings are trying to match expectations in reality all the time. So, when we understand that, then we understand the need for a deliberation or knowing function in the mix with our <coughs> <coughs> kind of action or engagement, namely interface or acting functions. The end. Don't, don't you ever again forget to eat plenty of cheese.